Hey everyone, how you doing? Dwayne here with Sims Ministries. Good to be with you on this Thursday evening. I pray that uh, you're having a good week so far. Uh, it's time to get into our Thursday evening study, and we are finishing up with the last lesson. We've been 26 weeks with the Believer's Authority, what you didn't learn in church. We have been uh, learning about what authority that we have through Jesus Christ. We only have authority through Jesus. But here's the thing. If you're a Christian, Jesus lives inside of you, which gives you the authority to be able, that same raising from the dead power, that same power is in your spirit. You just have to learn how to renew your mind and get this to come into the physical. And that's what we're doing here with this uh, series is to teach you about your authority and taking that authority in all the situations that you have in life. I tell you, uh, when I got a hold of this, it really lets you rest in the things that you have through what Jesus has done, we uh, we don't have to battle on our own. Uh, Satan is going to come against us, that's for sure. But we have the the weapons to fight him with, and that's the Word of God. Every time in the Bible that Jesus battled with the devil or had any contact with the devil whatsoever, he used the Word of God, and Satan had to flee every single time. And Jesus says he will never leave us or forsake us. Never. Man, that now never means never. No matter what, if you're a child of God, he will never leave you or forsake you, no matter what the situation is, right? We're going to say a prayer, and then we're going to get right into our study here this evening. Father, thank you so much. I just... Uh, give you praise and honor for allowing me to be able to go through this study material. And I thank those that have hung in here with us and continue to, to uh, listen to this study. I pray that the people are, are actually uh, getting their mind renewed to your word and what your word says about the authority that we have through Jesus Christ. And uh, Father, we just give you praise and pray that this particular study goes out far and wide, just as far as it can go. And we give you praise for that in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, we're going to get into the final lesson here, which is fight to win. I love this. And I want to begin things with an old saying that my dad used to tell me, you know, a lot of times we hear, especially here in America, it's like, oh, you, you got to fight fair. You got to fight fair. Listen, Satan doesn't fight fair. He doesn't. He pulls every trick that he can to come against you and to kill, steal, and destroy. And let me tell you, when you're in a true fight, not just, you know, here, put them up, put them up, you know, type of thing. Um, you're, you need to fight to win. You know, my dad used to always say, listen, he said, there's only one fair fight. And he said, that's in a ring with a referee. He said, you don't have no ring, no referee. It's the last man standing. If you got to pick up a stick, a club, whatever you got to do, talking about a physical fight here, you do what you have to do to win that fight. Because that's sitting there, well, you're not fighting fair. You're not fighting fair. There isn't any fair fights. That's for spectators. And that's for in the ring. Uh, that's where fair fighting is all about. When you're in a true fight, it's whoever is standing up at the end of the fight. Amen. I've received many benefits through understanding the believer's authority. Man, that is true. I've realized that Satan doesn't have the power to make me do anything. This old saying, the devil made me do it, is absolutely wrong. Satan can't make you do anything. All he can do is lie to you. 
Then, if you believe his lie, you empower him to accomplish his will. But he can't do anything to you without your consent and cooperation. Now, I know there's a lot of people out there, oh, I'm not giving consent consent and allowing Satan. Yes, you are. (laughs) Yes, you are. You are opening up a door. You're allowing Satan to come in some way. You may not realize it. You may not think it. But that's exactly what's going on. You are allowing Satan to come in, and you're cooperating with him. This is the reason the battle isn't against demonic powers directly. Satan has already been stripped. His only power is deception. See, that's one thing right there. Oh, I've got a demon. I've got this. I've got that. You know, well, then you've allowed something to come in. That's how Satan came against Adam and Eve. Satan didn't come in the form of some intimidating animal like a tiger or a bear or a mammoth. He chose the most subtle, cunning, crafty animal and came against them with words of deception. Satan chose the, chose the snake because he knew he had no power to force Eve into doing anything. He used words to deceive her. If Eve would have evaluated those words and refused to allow those ungodly thoughts to influence her, she wouldn't have been tempted. If she would have refused to listen or to think anything that countered what God had said, she wouldn't have committed that sin and plunged the whole human race under the authority and dominion of the devil. This all happened through words, and it's still happening today. Satan is fighting us with words and thoughts. How many of you all can sit there and say, man, this is so true? It is true, because it's in your mind, the thought pattern that you have. Choose wisely. The battle is right between your ears. It's not out there somewhere in the heavenly places. See, that's where, oh, we need to go battle the enemy. We need to uh, pull down these strongholds. And Right here is the stronghold. Right here is the stronghold. And see, it took me a while to get used to this type of teaching because it's like it goes against what we have been taught in church. Oh, we beg and plead and we this and that. Oh, Satan's just been on. How many times you been in a testimony, sir? Oh, it's awful. Satan's just been whipping me all week. We'll put a stop to it. See, we want to throw everything off onto God. Well, you know, if God wants it done, it'll be done. It'll be taken care of. But I, I you know, I'm not supposed to do anything. I'm, you know, what power have I got? <laughs> You've got a bunch, a bunch of power. The word of God releases life. Words that are inconsistent with that God says, with what God says, ministers death. Let me read that again. Words of God release life. Words that are inconsistent with what God says, ministers death. What's some of the words that are inconsistent? Well, man, I tell you what, according to our our uh, uh, test that we've done here, it looks like you got cancer. It looks like this. It looks like that. You've got diabetes. You've got uh, this or that or whatever the case may be. That's inconsistent with what God says. It's inconsistent. We are to walk in health, walk in health. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. If you keep speaking death, you are going to get death. Guaranteed. If you speak life, you are going to get life. It's either life or death, one or the other. What are you listening to? What are you saying? Because, see, I can attest uh, uh, 
people that I know personally. Oh man, they go to church and they're, they're doing this and they're doing, Oh yeah, man, I believe. And I, this and I, that, and they're turning right around and they're just swinging the door wide open for Satan to come in and just eat their lunch. I see the things that are going on. I see how Satan is working and it's subtle and they're just like, Oh, it's okay. I'm okay. Everything's all right. You know, and then they wonder why their body is in the shape that it's in, uh, why all these different things are going on with them. When they have opened that door up and allowed the enemy to come in, and then they go to speak in death. They go to speak in death. Well, I tell you what. And then they go to telling us what. And just go to speak in death and negative and it's just terrible matthew 12 36 and 37 but i say unto you that every idle word that men speak shall speak they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment for by thy words they thou shalt be justified and by thy words thou shalt be condemned Every word you speak and every word you hear are either producing life or they're producing death. Everything you listen to, oh, get a hold of this, come on now. Everything you listen to on the radio, television, or in movies is ministering either life or death. Oh, it's okay to watch this show. I know it's got a lot of... of uh, uh, basically soft porn is what it is and and uh, you know men on men and women on women and all this other stuff uh, yeah you know it's it, it doesn't affect you know i'm not that it's ministering either life or death if you disagree with this and you're disagreeing with the truth from god's word you are deceived Man, that is so true. I used to think that same way. Oh, I can watch this or I can watch that. And, oh, man, that's funny. And uh, it's a comic and all this other kind of stuff. And then you go to listen to this stuff and it's like you're just feeding garbage. You're just feeding garbage. Well, man, you're sounding like uh, them old timey people that you can't do this and you can't you can do whatever you want to do. I ain't saying you can't do it. You can do whatever you want to do. But then don't come back and gripe and complain. And, and, well, I can't, I don't understand why this stuff is happening to me. I don't know why my marriage is falling apart. And I don't know why I'm having trouble with my kids. And I, 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 I don't know. That's exactly why. You don't want to go by the truths of what God's word says. Now, nobody's saying move into a monastery or take a vow of silence. or uh, We're just encouraging you to recognize life and death, to exercise more self-control in what you're choosing. Every television and radio that we've ever had has an on and off knob. Multiple stations to choose from. You don't have to sit in front of the set and just passively take whatever is offered to you. Choose wisely. We, my wife and I, we if there's a program, it, it could be halfway through the program or a movie, and it's very, very good, and all of a sudden comes out this filth and this junk and everything else. We click it off. We, we, I don't want that. I don't want that in my life. I don't want that in my mind. I don't want that at all. I'm still dealing with things from my past that the Satan keeps throwing back up and everything else. And you, you know exactly what I'm talking about. He throws these things that you've done, you've said, uh, um, all these things he throws right back up to you constantly constantly i don't need to be adding more garbage like that
And I have to deal with this the same as anybody else. There have been times when I've had nothing specific to do. I've, I've wanted to kick back and relax a bit, so I turn on television. I flip through the channels, and nothing was on. What's new? But I ended up watching something just for the sake of watching it, not realizing that it was pouring junk into me. You need to recognize that Satan is fighting you with negative words. You can't change the fact that every word you hear is either releasing death or it's releasing life. That's the same thing that's coming out of your mouth. It's either death or life. Be careful the way you speak to your spouse. Be careful the way you speak to your kids. Be careful the way you speak to your parents because it's death or life. But you can choose whether to listen to it or not. You don't have to swallow it and believe it. You can get to where you're consistently listening to words that minister life, but the choice is up to you. It is completely up to you. Second Peter 1, 2. Grace and peace be multiplied into you through the knowledge of God and our Lord Jesus Christ. It's through the knowledge of God that grace and peace are multiplied unto us. Satan knows this which is why he battles us in our mind. Romans 12, 2. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Metamorpho is a Greek word meaning transformed. It's where we get the English word metamorphosis. If you want to change from being something creepy, crawly, and earthbound into something beautiful that can fly, then you need to renew your mind. Many people are trying to take a shortcut. They keep their minds in the gutter, listening to all the things of the world. They allow the sewage of this world to flow through them, but they want the results that God produces. They think, if I can pray and ask, I can receive. There's more to it than just praying and believing. They must also cooperate with God's spiritual laws. The way God operates through people is when they get their hearts and minds stayed upon him. However, Satan hinders God through their thoughts. See, we've... Uh, so much nowadays is this hyper grace. It, it's like... Well, I don't, I don't have to do anything. God, you know, I'm, I'm under grace. and But, you know, it's grace with faith. You have to mix the two. It is grace with faith. You have to combine the two. You can't just go off and go, well, I'm going to think and do and act any way I want to act because I, I'm under grace. God has provided grace. When, when he sent his son to die on a cross, that's the grace that he provided. But now you have to accept that through faith. You have to accept that through faith. Same thing with being healed. You have to accept that through faith. Romans 8, 6, To be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. If you want to experience life and peace, then you need to become spiritually minded. Jesus said, the words that I speak unto you are the spirit and they are life. You can find that in John 6, 63. Being spiritually minded is being word minded. It's thinking on what has God to say about your situation instead of what the world has to say. Okay, the doctor says that you've got whatever. So fill in the blank. The doctors, this is what they say. But what does God's word say? God's word say that you are healed. You are, uh, you know, go through and sit, find out what the word says about you. I'm a believer. I am a follower of Jesus Christ. This is what I have that I, because of that. You can start in Genesis and go all the way to Revelations and see the benefits that God gives for those 
who do and believe upon him. It's thinking on what God has to say about your situation instead of what the world says. If you are word-minded, you'll have life, and your situation, you'll have life and peace. Grace and peace will be multiplied to you as you continually think on the knowledge of God. You can't just think negatively, adopting the mindset of the world, and then experience the life, grace, and peace of God. It doesn't work that way. And it doesn't. That's why there's so many people out here frustrated. That's why so many people are, are struggling. And it's like, well, I, I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying to do. No, you've got to do. You've got to do what God's word says. A lot of people get all of their news off of little three-minute news bites on the radio. Uh, there's some people who hardly watch any television at all. If there's something really important, it'll make the radio news bites. And a lot of people have got to where they pretty much handle three minutes of anything negative that the world has to say, and that's about all they can go is three minutes. That's where I'm at. I, I just I don't like watching the news. I'm not trying to put my head in sand and, and I want to be, but I figure it'll, it'll come around. I'm not going to sit here and just keep feeding myself on the 10 spies net, 10 spies network. That's the way Andrew puts it. I like it. But even in those little three minutes, so much of what is said is based on fear, doubt, and unbelief. Now, guys, you know that whenever you're watching the news and you're watching these things, it is, that's all it's pumping, is fear, doubt, and unbelief. If you swallow all that, you'll be in turmoil. But if you listen to and go by the word of God, you'll have life, grace, and peace. But see, people don't want to do that. They don't want to go by what the word of God says. They want to go by what? The Ten Spies Network says, through God's word, I know that I am protected. Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, shalt, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, says the Lord. Now, are you going to point to that and go, that's not true? Are you going to say, you're basically calling God a liar if you say that this isn't true. But this is what it says. No weapon, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue, every person that yak, 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 Satan included, that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage. This is where, what we've inherited through Jesus Christ. Notice that you aren't automatically protected. This verse says that you have to condemn the words that come against you. If you just passively sit there and let this ungodly things be spoken, then they will impact you. But when you hear something contrary to God's word, uh, you've got cancer, or you've got this, or you've got that, or you're not worth 10 cents, and uh, you, all these, th that's contrary to what God's Word says. If you will condemn it and recognize it being wrong and counter it with the true Word, then this becomes, then the Word that they've said against you becomes powerless. Now, this is Andrew talking here. His wife says his wife will tell him that there's many times that he talks back to the television and the radio. They'll be listening to the news, and they'll say, it's flu season. I'll declare there is no season where the Word of God doesn't work. See, that's how you have to combat this. How many times have you said that? 
well, it's flu season. I got to go out here and get that flu shot. And I got to go out here and do this. And I've, I've got to, I got to, got to, got to, got to, got to. Why don't you stand and declare what the word of God says? No plague shall come nigh my door. And that's a good declaration. There is no season where the word of God doesn't work. By his stripes, I have been healed. I'm not getting the flu. Cancer. Diabetes. Fill in the blank. I'm not getting it. This is what it means to condemn the words that come against us. Even if many people around me are affected, I will be safe and sound. Psalms 91, 7, and 8. If you're taking notes, write this down. This is so good. A thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. In addition to protection, God's word promises prosperity, healing, and deliverance. If you will keep your mind fixed on him, these things will work for you. Remind yourself of how God protected, prospered, healed, and delivered other people in the word. Look how many times he took care of the Israelite people. And what did they do? They got their mind off of God and got their eyes off of him and got things messed up. Keep those thoughts in the forefront of your thinking and you'll have peace. That's so true because it's like, well, this Corona and Bologna and whatever else you want to call it. It's like, well, we better get them shots. We better do this. We better do that. Why don't we start declaring what the word of God says? You know what it is? Let's be truthful. We don't believe it. It's unbelief. It's unbelief. It, it, it's like, well, uh, man, I see this happening. And I see we want to continue to work off our five sentences, what we taste smell, hear, feel, you know, and, and we got to go, oh, well, this is what I see. This is what I see. Why don't you go above what the word of God says? But if you allow your mind to go the way the world is thinking, fear, doubt, and unbelief, you'll have all those things instead. It really is that simple. You mean it's that simple? It's just of changing the way you think on things. Yes, it is that simple. Simple. The antidote to any problem. Grace and peace come through the way you think. Think properly, and then you'll have grace, joy, life, and peace. They don't come by prayer, but through the knowledge of God. What? They don't come by prayer. That's exactly right. Prayer should be... A, 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 a continual thanking God for what he's already done and already provided. Thank you, Lord, that you're providing peace in my life, that you that I don't have to believe this stuff that's going around in this world. I'm not of this world. Um, 2 Peter 1, verse 3, According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. All things, <coughs> excuse me, all things that pertain to life and godliness come through the knowledge of God. That's not some things or a few things. That's all things. See, this is where we just, we will not, we just refuse to accept the fact when it says all, that means all things, not some. And when you can get that into your, no, all things, not some things, all things. This means that if you are sick in your body, you have a knowledge problem. If you're poor, you have a knowledge problem. 
If you're depressed, you have a knowledge problem. Hallelujah. The antidote to any problem is the knowledge of God. Most people don't believe that. They think that if you have an emotional problem, you take a pill for it. This problem has nothing to do with me and my choices. I don't have any responsibility whatsoever. I'm just the way my hormones are, my chemistry. It's what so-and-so did to me. All of the excuses are right, wrong in the light of God's word. You need to accept responsibility. Right there is the, the, the main problem. You need to accept responsibility, go to the Bible, and start thinking according to God's word. Right there is the answer. Go to God's word, start thinking according to the word. 2 Peter 1.4, the key is how you think. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, have escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. There's the escape right there is through God's word. Everything that we need in our lives is in God's word. Every single thing. Through the knowledge of God, we are given exceedingly great and precious promises. The word of God is the knowledge of God, and it's God's thoughts. These promises are the knowledge of God. We become partakers of God's divine nature and escape the corruption that is in the world through the lust by the knowledge of God, not by begging for it. Not by begging for it in prayer or pleading for God to move. You must get your thinking straightened out. You can't be tempted with something that you don't think. <laughs> what a statement. You can't be tempted with something you don't think. What is your mind full of? Hebrews eleven fifteen. Truly, if they have been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have opportunity to have returned. This scripture is talking about Abraham and Sarah. They used to live in Ur of the Chaldees, which was in the area of Babylon. God told them to leave there and come over to the land we now call Israel. He told them that someday they would inherit that land. Abraham actually entered into the promised land when he was about 75 years old. He lived to be 175 and never did inherit that promise in the lifetime, in his lifetime. He had to buy a parcel of land just to be able to bury his wife. But it was generations later that the Israelis actually came in and possessed the land. How did Abraham remain faithful to God's promise? His word in him for all of those years. Hebrews 11.15 says that if they had been mindful, thinking of the country they came out of, they might have an opportunity to have returned. For them, an opportunity to go back to Ur of the Chaldees would have been a temptation to sin. It would have been a rebellion against God for them to have returned to their homeland. Their opportunity to sin, temptation, was linked to what they thought. If you think on things that provide you with this temptation, then the opportunity to sin will come. This is true. Whatever you're thinking on, the opportunity of sin will come if you're thinking on negative things. But if you refuse to think on things that generate temptation, you won't be tempted. That's good news. Another way of saying is this. You can't be tempted with what you don't think about. If you're thinking about lustful things, you're going to be tempted. If you're thinking about uh, 
negative things, depressing things, you're going to be tempted. Our culture, our culture has convinced us that we need to be informed about all the junk, rottenness, and perversion going on in the world. God's word teaches otherwise. Romans 16, verse 19. I would have you wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. Don't be watching this gar garbage. Don't, don't be paying attention to this garbage. Speaking of garbage, we're getting ready to get into a bunch of it this next year with this election and everything else. Be very careful. Be very mindful of what you're doing here. I'm not saying that we, we need to vote. Yes, we do. We need to be aware of what's going on. But when the mudslinging gets going, start finding out things for yourself. Don't be listening to the 10 Spies Network. We need to be simple or ignorant of evil. The Lord doesn't want us to be well-versed in these things. The original temptation Adam and Eve fell for was the desire to know more, to know good and evil. God had already given them all the knowledge that they needed. Everything he told them was good. God doesn't want us to know evil. Yet today, we feel like we need to know all kinds of evil. Man, there's a whole nother teaching right there about all this um, demonic deliverance and everything else. It's like, oh, everybody's got a demon and people got to be delivered. And, and it's just concentrate on that and generational curses and all this other kind of stuff. Why don't we just start targeting in on God and what the Bible says and casting that stuff out? Yes, there is a need to cast things out. I, I'm fully aware of that. But we don't have to go and just every single whip stitch. Somebody's got to get something casted out. Get it, cast it out, and be done with it. By doing so, we open ourselves up to temptation. We can't be tempted of what we don't think. We need to win the battle in our minds. We need to quit exposing ourselves to all kinds of junk Satan is offering through this world. And we need to get to where all we think on is God's word. You think on God's word and you be, you'll be so full of the word, there's no way anything can come in and come against you. That's the whole idea right there. If the word of God is all we meditate on, then God's word is all we'll be tempted with. That's the way that it works. I know this is a long one here tonight, but this is this is worth it. This is worth it. Just hang in there with me. Naive in New York. This person is talking about it. It says, I'm, I'm a living example of this truth in action. I was raised in a Christian home and just believe what I was told. I don't remember hearing much about adultery, fornication, or sexual immorality, except that it was wrong. So I never really thought about it. When I was 18 years old, my mother took me to a Billy Graham youth event in Switzerland. Since we were traveling as part of the group, I stayed with a bunch of guys while mom was with the other women. Our first stop was New York City. I was plucked out of my controlled environment and planted downtown in a very ungodly city. I was exposed to things that I've never seen or heard before. I didn't even know they existed. But because I was naive, I wasn't tempted. I remember walking around 42nd and Broadway where there was a tremendous amount of prostitution. There must have been about 100 women lined up all along the wall. I didn't have a clue. I never even drawed on my on and never even dawned on me what was going on. I never ever wondered why they were there. I just thought, what a great opportunity. So I took some tracks and went down the row, passing them out and witnessed to every one of these prostitutes. I didn't know who they were or why they were standing there. So I wasn't tempted. There I was out on the streets of downtown New York City at two in the morning witnessing the people. I'd never seen that many folks in my life as a little country boy from Texas. I was pretty shocked. 
Can you imagine? I can remember uh, my experience with New York City when I was in the military. And uh, he ain't lying. He's telling the truth. While out there, a pimp tried to sell me one of these of his girls. He came up to me and started speaking in street language. I didn't know what he was talking about. Nobody I ever talk, knew talked that way. This guy, guy tried to sell me for 10 minutes, but I didn't understand what he was trying to communicate. Finally, he just took me, turned around, threw up his hand, and walked off, shaking his head. He was probably wondering, what rock did this hit crawl out from under? <laughs> Very true. Back at the hotel, I told my roommate some of the things that the guy had said. They had to explain to me that it was a pimp trying to sell me a prostitute. I was so naive. I didn't even know what he was talking about. I hadn't thought that way before. I wasn't aware of the terminology. Therefore, I wasn't tempted. <laughs> That's good. You can win. Are you someone who has a fight, has to fight temptation tooth and nail? Are you holding on white knuckled, yet you can't understand why it's so hard to live for God? It's because you allow so much junk to be planted in you. You're trying to rebuke lust, sexual addiction, pornography by doing spiritual warfare against these demons. Yet you're sitting there listening to and watching stuff every day on television that encourages this sin. Today's television programs will expose you to more sex in an hour than your great-grandparents saw in their entire lifetime. Even if you find a decent show, the commercials will kill you. The average magazine and newspaper isn't much better. They show all kinds of nudity and sexual content. The media bombards with it on all sides. For example which I don't uh, watch any of it. Uh, I know someone who does, <laughs> no, the it's not my wife. But the soap operas that are on today, they're not like the soap operas when, when I was growing up as a kid and mom had sat and watched soap opera stuff. No, this is soft porn is what it is. People naked in bed and and uh, man on man and women on women and and uh this this is what soap operas are all about today so when you sit there and feed your mind on that junk and you're looking at that garbage and everything else then satan will take a hold of that and will take and twist and turn and everything else and they'll start telling you that your spouse isn't good enough anymore because he's not like mr studley man over here and uh that's the way this garbage gets started. The sad thing is most Christians allow this stuff into their homes. They expose their children to it, and then they wonder why they're having problems. They're doing spiritual warfare and intercession so that their kids will grow up to be godly people when they, they just they just allow Satan to deposit their perversion and unbelief in them. The devil loves it when people use the television as a babysitter, so they don't have to pay attention to their kids. We've allowed things into our lives and then wondered, why am I so tempted? Why is the Christian life so hard to live? It's hard because Satan comes at us through the way that we think. He can do nothing to us without our consent or cooperation. We need to start being selective about what we let into our eyes, ears, and hearts. Your life will go in the direction of the, your dominant thoughts. Don't let junk of this world fill your mind. Set your heart to seek the Lord and meditate on His Word. The battle truly is in your mind. You can win this fight. But you must fight to win. Man, hallelujah. That, as the old saying goes, if that don't light your fire, your wood's soaking wet. 
and I know some of them, some of you out there right now, your wood's wet, and you're like, well, I can't figure out why this is happening. I can't figure out what's going on. Why, 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 why? The answer's right there, right there in the Word of God. Right there staring you in your face, but you don't want to look at it. You don't want, you don't want to do anything different. You know, as the old saying goes, any old dead fish can float downstream. It takes something to go against the current. I pray that you just don't want to be a dead fish. But you know what? That's your choice. Nobody can take and beat this into you. Nobody can sit there and go, now you're going to listen to this whether you like it or not. You've got to have you got to have a desire. You've got to have a, a, a wanting to change the way that you think. That's where I've had to get. I've, I've had to have a desire. I don't want to think this way anymore. I don't want to think this garbage. I don't want uh, Satan coming in here throwing junk against me and sickness and all this other junk. I'm going to learn everything that I can about what God has provided for me. Amen. Wow. Good series. Your authority in Jesus Christ and what he has done for you. Next week, we'll be starting a new series. Let me get my study here. We'll be starting a new series called You've Already Got It. So quit trying to get it. And it goes into a little bit what we talked about this evening about you've already got healing, you've already got prosperity, you've already got these things that have been um, provided for you. You got to reach out there and you got to grab a hold of it. And uh, don't don't be a lazy Christian. Let, let get get a hold of some of this stuff. And and I know I'm just an old Southern Illinois country boy. You may not like listening to me. Um, you can get on awmi.net and that's Andrew Womack's, uh, website and you can download the study guide that we just went through as well as the one we're going to do here. And you can follow what right along at your place and you can get a hold of these truths and you can start teaching this, um, Man, I tell you what, when you do get a hold of this, it it, it just puts you in a rest. It's like, I, I don't have to battle this stuff anymore. I don't have to. God's already provided, and he's already done the battling for me. Satan's lost. All he's doing is trying to keep, uh, keep knocking and trying to get me to open up a door. I'm not opening up a door. I'm not going to. I'm going to do everything that I can to keep that from happening. So good to be with you this evening. Thank you for being with me in this series. Uh, we'll be starting a new series next Thursday. We'll be right back here tomorrow with another daily devotional. But until then, man, let's go out and let's do something for Jesus. Look what all he has done for us. I mean, seriously, look at everything that he has provided for us. Let's do something for him today. Amen. We'll see you tomorrow. God bless. When